we've realized for quite some time now that we have such valuable resources in our national registries. We, are, we have the opportunity in Sweden and in some other countries to use the unique personal identification numbers that every person, every citizen has. And since we are collecting a wealth of data, uh, valid data, across the populations for certain diseases and interventions, and we've also had, we have long experience with conducting clinical trials, and we've realized that why don't we use the registries in which we collect all the data anyway, just to randomize patients. And thereby we can make the best possible mixture between observational studies enrolling all comers populations, keeping control of everybody for long term, with the best methodology for comparing outcomes, namely randomization. And it also got advantages in avoiding selection bias because you're taking the whole spectrum as the basis of your initial pool. Exactly. We try to avoid selection bias in addition to what we need to sometimes because the, we need to have some exclusion criteria yes. maybe for consent or for other purposes. But we're, we're rolling very large proportions of the actual populations. In m many of the trials we are doing right now or have done, we have a proportion of 50 to 80 percent of the eligible population, which, is, which enhances and, and, uh, and, uh, the external validity of the Yeah, findings. so the applicability of the trial is greatly enhanced, yeah. and, that, and that is absolutely terrific. Another asset is the completeness of follow-up. Since we, we are using personal identification number and public registries, we have complete follow-up on the variables that we are using for, this, uh, uh, for these trials. Now in the Sweetheart uh, IFR study, uh, there was a composite primary endpoint, uh, including death, myocardial infarction, uh, and unplanned revascularization. And for mortality, there's no, there's no problem. We have a complete follow-up, and it doesn't need any definition. For myocardial infarction and sensitive study, and also unplanned revascularization, we did add uh, um, uh, event adjudication yes. to the trial. Yes. In some of the previous trials, we have not used event adjudication if we use a primary endpoint that is very uh, not as sensitive. Yeah. And obviously with myocardial infarction, it may be quite critical to have event adjudication it, as a key endpoint in the it trial. It is in this type of trial. I think in some other trials we may not need it because it, although the definition may be a little bit uh, shaky, uh, the, the randomization makes it as shaky in both arms. So the comparison may, might, might be as good as anyway. Now, the, um, as my understanding, of all those considered potentially eligible for the trial, uh, about 20% actually were randomized. Is that correct? So in this type of trial, it's a little bit more difficult to say who is eligible, who is not eligible. Not all interventional sites did participate in the trial okay. because there were competing trials. Right. And, and not all patients, it's, it's always relative who needs an FFR or, an, or an, uh, a physiology guided intervention. So that was up to the investigator to decide based on the visual assessment of the severity of the stenosis, is, an, is a physiology-guided intervention needed or not? So, um, can you assure us that those included in the trial are representative of those potentially eligible? Uh, to, uh, to a very large degree, I think so. I think the baseline characteristics shows that it is very representative to, of a stable and stabilized non-ST elevation ACS population because we did not enroll STEMI or unstable non-ST elevation ACS uh, patients. And as you previously demonstrated in the TASTE trial, uh, the costs are very much less than a conventional trial. Considerably less, yeah. What sort of order? Uh, it's, it's, it's a magnitude. Uh, it's, 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 the cost is uh, typically a tenth. A, or, a tenth of the trial, of, of a, a conventional of a, trial. A conventional trial. And it can be even more even more uh, inexpensive as compared to large pharmaceutical trials. Yes. Uh, but but we, in doing those more complicated trials, including pharmaceutical agents with safety concerns, we need to add some safety measures and some adjudication in order to be sure about the endpoint. So Stefan, this, uh, congratulations to you and your colleagues because this is uh, another landmark in how trials may be done in the future. I think this, this trial shows both the importance of the methodology, but also the intervention itself. And, and we, have, we are happy to contribute to the understanding and treating patients better in the future. Terrific.